Welcome to this lesson on mole ratios, the question of the day. Why do we have to sometimes convert between moles and grams instead of just using the formula mass of the substance? I hope you said that the formula mass of a substance typically is going to represent the molar mass of that substance, meaning that you are looking at just one mole of that thing, but we aren't always working with just one mole of that substance. Coefficients in chemical reactions don't actually represent the number of moles. I mean, they do, but they don't have to. Uh, they really are telling us the ratio of one substance to another in this chemical reaction. So looking here, we have this reaction. It's called the Haber process because it's like a super famous reaction. This is telling us that for every one mole of nitrogen, you are required to use three moles of hydrogen in order to get two moles of ammonia. Remember, there's an imaginary one out here. Our ratio here is one to three to two. Now, truthfully, these coefficients could represent a lot of things. It could represent the moles of a substance. It could also represent molecules of that substance, um, which would be the number of particles. In some cases, we would be talking about atoms. So we often use particles just to mean atoms or molecules. And it could also be liters of gas. Um, and we'll get more into that later when we talk about gases. But the coefficient could represent a lot of different things. Now, the amount of substance that we need doesn't always match up to this ratio from the chemical equation. If we had this reaction, but instead of wanting to make two moles of ammonia, we only wanted to make 1.7, we would have to adjust the coefficients of everything else to keep in line with that ratio. In order to do this, of course, we would need a balanced chemical equation. If you need some help with that, I will link that video in the description below the video so you can make sure you're really good on balancing. Um, but using a balanced equation, we are going to kind of adjust the coefficients of everything else inside of this chemical equation to match up with what we want. Um, and we're not actually going to write it in the equation, kind of like it's implied here. This is just saying like how many moles of nitrogen would we need or how many moles of hydrogen would we need? And we're going to make adjustments from there. So just like with converting grams to moles and using a ratio, we're going to use a ratio here as well. So let's say that we wanted to specifically find out the number of moles of nitrogen that we needed to get, um, 1.7 moles of ammonia we are going to take the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. So every time that we need, or every time we use one mole of nitrogen, we're going to get two moles of ammonia. So we're going to use that ratio of one to two to fill this out. So like I've mentioned before, every time I set up a ratio, I just talk it out to myself. So I would say for every one mole of nitrogen, I need two moles of ammonia. How many moles of nitrogen would I need? to get 1.7 moles of ammonia. Now, when we set up the ratio, we want our uh, things to be cross multiplied. So we're gonna multiply moles of one thing by moles of another thing. And that is going to have to be set up so that it's moles of um, this substance from the chemical equation gets multiplied by the moles from what you're solving for. Um, so in this case, it's moles of nitrogen times the moles of ammonia. This comes from the question. And then we would cross multiply this here. And we are just cross multiplying the coefficients. This moles of whatever kind of counts like a unit. So we're going to line those up um, vertically and horizontally accordingly. When we cross multiply, we would do the 1 times the 1.7 and the 2 times the x. And it would look like this. We would get 1.7 on one side and 2x on the other. We're going to divide both sides by 2 in order to get the x by itself. And this indicates that we'd have 0.85 moles of nitrogen needed to get 1.7 moles of ammonia in our final product. Now, a lot of the time when we do these questions, you're going to have to take it a step further and convert those moles into grams. And I have already gone over this in my previous video, so I will make sure to link that as well in the description to make sure that you feel really good about it. Um, I don't want to talk too much about this here because, of course, I do have that full video, but it is important to know that this oftentimes is the next step after just crisscrossing those um, coefficients. If this is a little confusing to you, I would urge you to look at it like a recipe. Most of the time, our recipes are going to tell us, like, this will serve four people. 
Well, if you wanted it to serve eight people or instead make it serve four people twice so you could have leftovers and not have to cook tomorrow, you would need eight servings. So in that case, you would multiply every coefficient by two, right? You would want to double your recipe. If you were required to use one pound of pasta for the recipe, but you were doubling it, you would now need two pounds of pasta. This is kind of the same idea. We're just kind of altering the amounts of stuff that we're working with. So in this case, instead of making two whole moles of ammonia, we want to cut that down a little bit and get it down to 1.7. So this means that every other coefficient should be cut down by the same amount. And this ratio is just a way for us to figure out exactly what that product is going to be. Sometimes it's really easy and you don't have to do all of the math. Like if I only wanted one mole of ammonia, I would know I'd have to cut everything in half because it's a really nice, simple way to do it. But going from this two to the asked about 1.7 does make it a little bit tougher, which is why setting up the ratio is going to help quite a bit. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson. Be sure to go back and look at those other videos that I've linked just to make sure that you're feeling good about this. Stoichiometry is really tough, and here I'm teaching it kind of piecemeal, one lesson after the next. This way, by the time you get to the full stoichiometry unit, you're not even learning anything new. You're just stitching all of these skills together. Hope to see you there. Bye.